Hey there folks. So in this small short video, what we're going to do is just look at how we can actually get all of these tools that we've been working with, all of these ones that exist here so far in transform. And this is why I've waited for now to be able to add this in because I wanted to have tools that we could test it with. How do we actually get these to work with control Z? Because at the moment we've got no ability to actually undo this stuff. So I'm just going to show you what I mean by this. If I take this crate, I go to select and select the actor in the scene. And I go to transform. So this is where this crate is right now. If I were to offer a random actor offset on the X and the Y and I move it over there, what if I'm not happy with where that's moved to? Well, if I press control Z, you can see it goes back to the undo clicking on elements. The last process that I did over here where I was clicking on this wall, it doesn't undo this thing that's happened over here where I've moved this. So I can't actually bring it back to where it was and undo that process that the actual editor utility widget has just done. So how do we go about actually doing that? Well, it's very simple and it only actually requires three nodes that we're going to need to look at, but we're going to need to put them into most of the systems that we've already done. So I'm just going to jump into here and I'm going to show you how to do it once or twice. And once I've shown you how to do it once or twice, you should be able to go through and add this in to most of your systems. OK, so what we need to do in order to do an undo action is we need to actually start a transaction. So the first node that we're going to need, I'm just going to do them here, is we're going to need a node called begin transaction. Let's just hover over that begin a new undo transaction. It's defined as all the actions that take place when the user selects undo a single time. So everything that we do in between the start of the transaction and the end of the transaction, and I'm going to spell it correctly, there you go. Everything that we do in between these two is going to get captured. And then when we press control Z, it's going to get rid and undo all of those processes. So when should we start doing the actual transaction? I'm going to bring these over and let's have a look at our offset. That's the one we were just using here. So I'm going to do it before I do the for each loop. I don't want to do it inside of the for each loop because I don't want to actually create a transaction for every single one of these. Maybe I do. Maybe you want to have this, but it's not very scalable as a tool. If I'm actually editing 50 objects at once, do I want to have 50 undos being created? Probably not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the actions that we've already got in this button. I'm going to move them over and I'm going to start the transaction here. OK, so now with that transaction started, the first thing that it does is it loops through all of the currently selected actors. It's going to check whether they're valid and then it's going to modify their set actor location. Now, you'd think, do I put the end transaction here? No, what we have to remember is that this is inside of a for each loop. So it goes into here, then it goes into here. And this is part of the loop. When it finishes this action, it's going to go back, add one to the index and do the next array element if there is one. So what we actually need to think about here is, yes, we have this loop. But what happens when the loop finishes? So I'm just going to move this over and I'm just going to drag myself an end transaction that I'm going to have run once on the completed. So no matter how many elements we loop through in our array element here, it's ultimately going to end that transaction here. OK, so what else can we put into here? Well, we could have a context, the context for the undo session, typically the tool editor that caused the undo. So this is useful to kind of define the name of this. So this is um, a location offset or I could put like editor utility widget location offset. And I might simplify that with no uh, no spaces in there. I can have a description in here. So uh, resets the offset on the selected actor locations. And we'll leave the primary object empty for now. You can see there says can be null and mostly is. So we don't actually need to worry about that. So it's worth doing this. You know, you don't have to, but it's worth going through and defining what your transactions are called. You just saw that when I am um, actually did the undo. So over here, if I do this control Z. You can see it says undo the resize node. So it's actually telling me what it is that I've just done. Now, you'd think this is enough. Obviously, we've started and we've edited. And this is obviously on the button location offset. So just to show you which one that is when we're doing it, we've got this actor location. This is the button location offset. So offset actor location. 
if I compile this and save it and I go through and say, all right, let's take this, 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 and this. I want to take all these, I want to select them in the level and I want to offset them on the Z by that amount. Okay, so they've all moved. They moved by 100, yeah, and control Z. Well, it's undo, undone the clicking on elements. It hasn't undone the actual transaction that we've started here. And that's because right now we actually don't have any of these objects being saved into the transaction itself. So the last node, remember I said we need three nodes for this. The last node that we need here is we actually need to transact the objects. We need to find this node called transact object. And we need to now say, um, notify the current transaction, the one that we've just started and we're going to end here and tell it that this thing here has been modified and we're going to place it into the undo buffer. So there is a list that's going on that obviously collates and records all of the actors that are being edited and changed and we're going to add this into there. So I'm going to add it in in between my is valid node. So let's put that in there and plug the actor of uh, the array element, the actor into the object and then we can set the actor location after that. So this is the action that gets done, but we're going to save this transact object into there. OK, so I'm back in the level now and I've got the exact same process. I've got those four cubes. I'm selecting the actors in my level. And now when I go over to this actor option here, you can see I've got this offset actor location. I'm going to set it to move it on the X. And if I press here, you see it moves them. But if I press Control Z now, you can see it moves them back and the undo set resets the offset on these. Well, let's just go and check that. Resets the offset on the selected actor locations. So the description that I put in there is the description that comes up in the undo action. So what we really need to do now, and this is a bit of a tedious process, but we'll build it into the actual process as we go through everything in the future, is we need to look at putting these into every single one of them. They're not mandatory, they're not compulsory to have in there, but having these options in means you can use your tool and then you can obviously undo that process. If you make a change, you save that change into the undo buffer. And once you finish making changes, you end that, act uh, that transaction. And it gives you the ability to undo things that your widget is doing, which is very, very important. So what I would recommend is going through and any of these you're looking for the for each loops, add a begin transaction, give it a context and a description, transact the object. So here the array elements are going to be the thing you're transacting. And at the end of the for each loop, always on the completed end of that transaction. And if you go through and do that, you'll find that you've got to do it a couple of times because obviously we've got location, rotation and scale options. But once you've done that, you'll have the ability to undo a control Z on every single one of these actions here, which gives you a lot more control over using your tool. It makes it a little bit more usable as well, because you can always make mistakes and undo them, which is always useful to be able to do. Thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing to access more of my Unreal Engine content.